Imagine your favorite place to read a book. Maybe it's at your local library, if you still go to libraries, or maybe it's at your place, by the window. Think about how that feels as you cozy up in that spot with your book in hand. That's the feeling I get every time when I open this theme in Obsidian. Our environment shapes us more than we realize, even when we realize how much our environment shapes us. That's why I care so much about putting intention into my thinking spaces. And one of my prominent thinking spaces these days is the app Obsidian. I wanna make sure when I enter it, it activates something within me so I can be my best self, so I can realize my fullest potential of thoughts and creativity. The way that I do that is by changing themes. And today's theme is not technical, it's not sterile, it's not like we're staring into the white abyss of Google Docs. No, this theme is warm, cozy, inviting. It invites and evokes a certain sense of creativity in me. It's like almost writing on paper, like you're writing for the New York Times. And I wanna show you how we get there. But first, let's dig a little bit deeper into why we might change a theme. We're not changing the theme of our calendar apps usually, so why change the theme of our thinking apps? And well, the answer is kind of there. It's so we can think in certain ways differently. Because our environment shapes us, if we change the theme, we can actually change how we're thinking. So I have three major themes that I work on, and this is my new favorite. And the theme that we're going to install together, we're calling it codename Soft Paper, because that's what it feels like to be in this environment. And that's the beauty of Obsidian. It gives you this blank canvas where you can create your own thinking environments. Now it does take a little bit of tinkering every now and then, and I've done the tinkering for you, and now we get to go through it together. So let's finally begin. So now on screen, you can see I have open one of my Obsidian vaults. This is actually the free Ideaverse for Obsidian vault. You can download it, it's in the description below. And the reason we're using this one as an example is because it's coming pre-baked with a few folders in here. And once we install the new soft paper theme, you'll really see how the folders come alive. So this is just a nice demo vault. It puts us all on the same page and I have a few different notes open so we can see how the new theme will look. All right, so here's how we want to begin. Whatever Obsidian vault you have open, whether it's Ideaverse or whether it's your own or your own Ideaverse, let's go down to the settings icon and it's right here. And what we're going to do is start by going to appearance and then manage. So once we hit manage, what we want to do is type Anupuchin. I don't know why it's called that. Your guess is as good as mine. We're going to hit install and use. So immediately we see this theme. Now this isn't the theme. Um, you know, how it starts out isn't what we would call soft paper, but it's still pleasant. So what we're going to do is hit the X button and now what we're in appearance, the first thing I want to let you know is that you, we can change the base color scheme, light and dark. While both themes work well with soft paper, we're going to focus on the light theme. So just make sure you have light theme activated there. Now the next thing we need to do is install a plugin, style settings. So let's go over to community plugins. We'll hit browse and we'll start to type style. Oh, looks like I already have it installed. It's already a part of Ideaverse. So click on that and then either install, enable, when you're ready, go ahead, this button will now say options. So once it says options, we can go click on that and it opened up the style settings options. And just so you know, it is now in your sidebar of community plugins. So I'll scroll down, I'll find it, and I have a few different style settings I can control, but we're now going to toggle open, twirl open the Anapuchin settings. So we can just toggle back and forth and get that nice little palette animation opening up. Excellent. But don't worry, you don't have to touch any of these settings because I've already done the work for you. So we can go ahead and collapse the Anapuchin settings. All you need to do is go ahead and click this import button. All right, so now this is where we're going to import from a link, and you can find that link in the description below, and it's going to open up a Google document. So on my screen, which I have open for us right now, that will lead us to this page. Let me make it a little bit bigger for everyone. These are the light Anapuchin style settings for soft paper. So what you can do is hit edit and select all, or hit command or control A, and then we can hit edit again and hit copy or Command or Control C. So now with all these settings copied, we simply go back to Obsidian and we just paste. So we go ahead and hit paste. Now I'll hit save and let's look at what happens. Ready? And boom, 
now we have soft paper installed so we have the home note I'm just going to click around so we can get a sense of how it looks and isn't this beautiful hey we're not done yet there are a couple other things that we need to do and for those wondering where this theme came from I have to give full credit to a reddit article that we'll link in the description below and so that redditor took the Annapuchin theme and customized it in a way that's very similar to this. Then, upon being inspired by that, I took it and made some final tweaks to my liking, made sure all the settings are ready to go, and that's what you're seeing on screen. But we're not done yet, and what we're about to do is going to turn soft paper into even softer paper, because right now we still have a sans serif font. Now, almost every theme in Obsidian works best with a sans serif font. So that is a non-stylized, you can check out this H here, it's just really harsh. All the lettering is really harsh, it's highly readable, it's highly effective and efficient. But in soft paper, we finally have an option to write like we're reading an article in the New York Times or the Washington Post or one of these fairly timeless types of publications. And the way we get there is by installing a font. I'm going to walk you through this font install together. So don't worry if you haven't installed a font before. I'm going to show you how to do that on the Mac. And don't worry, it's a completely free font. It's actually called New York. So we'll see how we get that installed and let's get to it. So just follow along with me. I'm going to go over to my internet browser and type something into a search field like Apple developer fonts. And then you'll find this website, fonts for Apple platforms. Uh, we'll have a link to that in the description below as well. And I'm going to scroll down until I finally find New York. And this is what we're going to install together. So go ahead, find New York, click on that, download, click allow or whatever the button is, and then we're going to install this together. So I'll go ahead and click on my downloads I'll double click on the file I'll see it's here I'm going to hit install and then we're going to go through this process we might speed up through this so you don't have to worry about all the different steps but you can see I'm just making sure I'm installing this properly and making sure that it goes through yada 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 okay so the font is now installed we sped through the install process and now I'm going to click back into obsidian now check out the font Look closely at it because it's about to change and we're going to get the full soft paper effect. So now that we have New York installed, what we're going to do is simply close, we're going to quit out of Obsidian so we can reopen it. So I can get rid of this. I think we're basically done with our internet browser. So let me go ahead and reopen Obsidian from the side and boom, New York. Now we have it. Now we have the theme as it's intended, our soft paper theme. This is one of the three themes I work in. I'll cover the other two themes in different videos, but I spend the most of my time in this creative, reflective theme that we're calling soft paper. Now how beautiful does this look? Let's just walk through what's going on. So we have rainbow folders on the left, and I think I want to add one more folder. So let me go ahead and just call this one X. So we're using the ACE folder framework that is part of the Ideaverse kit and we're adding this X folder for extras. And you can see how we maintain this rainbow look. You can see when notes are outside of the folders, how they appear. We have a stylish ribbon, which you can hide in your settings if you want to. We can always collapse as needed. So we have this beautiful writing space. And so you can see it has this almost card-like feel. So not only is it a soft paper-like experience, we have a serif font as opposed to a sans serif font. It is one of the few themes that allows for serif fonts to work. So we have those two things going for it. And then the third thing is we've made a card-like format that again brings us back to the analog. So we can really sink down into the experience of thinking and writing in a more tactile and slower way. Now, if we were in a completely white background look, so if we take it back to Prism, Prism is going to be efficient, it's going to be effective, and it's going to be a Swiss army knife. It'll meet you wherever you are. But when we wanna sink down and be a little bit more contemplative, maybe a little bit more reflective, creative, whatever it is, now what I do is I go to the Annapuchin theme with these settings applied to give us the soft paper look. Now, the other one that I will do, I mentioned the three themes. So we have Prism, when I want efficiency. We have Annapuchin's soft paper theme, when I want to be more reflective and creative. And then we have my very own light mode, LYT mode theme. For that one, I make sure I go into dark mode. 
And this is when I want to be both creative and just kind of in the zone on something in a wildly creative, expansive way. So those are the three themes I use. So you can see with LYT mode what some of these notes look like. And then when we go back over to our Anna Poochin soft paper, this is dark mode by the way. So even the dark theme with Anna Poochin kind of works. It's a little bit more intense. That's why I like to take it back over to the light mode and we can see how that looks here. Okay, so here's what you can do in this theme. I mentioned it's really good to slow things down and think things through. So what you can see now is I just threw in a note to the epic Wheel of Life review. So in a previous video that we'll have linked to here, we go over how to go through this epic Wheel of Life review. And this is the theme that you wanna do a review in. When you're doing an annual review, when you're doing a UN review, whatever type of review you're doing, in this case, the Wheel of Life review, I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of switching to Anna Poochin's soft paper theme. I mean, just look at how beautiful this is. Just scrolling through these different sections that you can fill in at your leisure as you go through a reflective, slightly creative process. All right, a couple of fast considerations if you choose to use this awesome theme by Anna Poochin with the soft paper overlay that we're providing. So if you go over to settings by clicking on the cog icon, scroll back down to style settings, and if for whatever reason you want to revert the Anna Poochin settings, you can just go ahead and click this button to reset all settings to default. And if you want to bring back the soft paper settings, then just go ahead and make sure you copy and paste that file that you'll find linked in the description in that Google Doc. Then go ahead and hit import and make sure that you paste the new import settings there. Boom, they're back. Another benefit of being able to switch themes is to switch context. As I like to say, our environment shapes us even more than we realize. So in this case, we can help our environment shape the way that we're thinking by changing themes. So yes, for different vaults of mine, I have different themes. Then I know immediately at a glance which vault I'm jumping into. And it allows me to then go full speed ahead in that context without any delay. That's really underrated. So if you're somebody that has multiple vaults, I do encourage you to kind of think about what theme is best in this situation and which theme is best in this different vault. So as we wind down this video, I'm really curious if you use Anna Poochin's soft paper theme and how the experience is for you. Definitely let me know in the comments below. And even more than that, what themes are you using? So I showed you a few themes of mine, including this brand new one with all the install instructions. Hopefully you get it working. But what other themes really make you come alive? Also, just really fast, I want to celebrate how amazing it is that we can do this in a tool like Obsidian, where we can customize our thinking spaces. Hey, let's get something straight. We're all on the screen on our digital devices too much. So at the very least, if we can find a way to make it more enjoyable and to make it more clear what type of mental space we want to be in, all the better. And we can do that in beautiful themes, whether we want to be retro 80s, um, expansively creative, like in the LYT mode theme, whether we want to be efficient, effective, and clear-minded, like in the idea versus main prism theme, or if we want to settle down into an environment that's a little bit more tactile, a little bit calmer, still creative, still evocative, and something where we can reflect. Maybe that's the time that we turn to Anna Poochin with this soft paper style setting applied. Now, I'd love to hear from you. How is this theme working for you? And when do you choose to use it? More than anything, I hope that this theme can bring more joy into your note making and thinking efforts. Now, if you wanna know what I think you should do with this theme, it's to do some sort of reflection, or how about an epic Wheel of Life review? Because if that's the case, here's the video for you, and it will walk you through the entire process about how to take stock of where you are in life and how to get more clarity, both where you've been, where you are, and where you want to go. So again, that video is here. I hope to see you there. And until next time, stay connected.